Welcome to Let the Quran Speak. I'm Aisha, your host. Four Marines were recently killed after a Muslim gunman, 24 years of age, opened fire at military sites in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Law enforcement and media have described the killings as an act of domestic terrorism. Joining me is Dr. Shabir Ali to discuss some of the root causes of this crime. Welcome to the show, Dr. Shabir. Pleasure to be on. So the Chattanooga shooting, there have been claims now um, associating it with this idea of jihad. Can you, is this jihad and what is jihad? Well, this is not jihad. What jihad is, is uh, a, a struggle to uh, bring betterment in society. Betterment starting with oneself and uh, in the people around uh, um, the, the Muslim individual. This is called a, a jihad. Now, jihad can take many different forms, to be sure. Uh, the, the active struggle to overcome one's own base or desires uh, for improvement in society by, by writing, by word of mouth, by speeches, uh, by supporting all good causes. Uh, but uh, jihad can also take on a military uh, tone in, in case uh, a, a community is being attacked, that community would have a right to defend itself, uh, even in a military confrontation. Uh, but, but that's not all that jihad is. And so and that's just one component of jihad, and it's a lot broader than just being on the battlefield. True, and there too, that for military sort of jihad would have its own rules and regulations, not uh, an unbridled, uh, war with uh, anyone and, and everyone in every which way possible, uh, but uh, there are regulations. For example, it is known that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, forbade his followers from uh, attacking uh, or hurting uh, a monk, monk in, his, in his hermit, um, people who are generally not combatants, like women and children. Uh, and uh, it, it is to be a fight between soldiers, basically. It's just that in the time of the Prophet, peace be upon him, uh, the definition of soldier was not so very firm in that uh, any civilian could be called upon to uh, defend the populace, and there was no dedicated army. So th that this now uh, allows some, some young people today to think of themselves as being part of that loose army, but, but it was not meant that the army should remain loose. In uh, all Muslim countries today, you would have, uh, as in every other country, uh, you would have a, a dedicated security uh, force that pr it, whose job it is to protect the country. And uh, the rest of us civilians can go on developing science and technology, studying, uh, you know, we can be employed in, in uh, the various uh, areas of arts and humanities. And uh, this is how life goes on. If everybody is uh, suddenly a soldier, uh, without any warmi warning or, or previous notice, then uh, how do we know who to trust and, and, and who really is, uh, is a soldier? Um, so, so this creates a sort of chaotic condition, uh, which is opposite to what the Quran is actually insisting upon, which is a situation of peace and harmony and the absence of chaos. So how does this relate to the idea of martyrdom? Because we are now seeing reports where blog posts of the man who committed this murder you know, said things like, um, I, I don't want to miss out on the opportunity to submit to God, and he wanted to become a martyr. So how does this relate to this idea of martyrdom? Now, martyrdom uh, classically uh, referred to the idea of a person uh, dying while uh, in, in the defense of his or her faith. Uh, for example, the, the, the term martyr actually in English comes from the Greek martyreo, and uh, that uh, goes back to Christian history. For if we speak of Justin Martyr, for example, we're referring to people who uh, died under uh, Roman rule uh, because they maintained their faith. Uh, early Christians were uh, sometimes reportedly um, fed to the lions or their limbs were amputated because they maintained monotheism uh, as distinct from the Roman insistence on multiple gods. And uh, Christians were deemed to be atheists and, and punished severely as a, as a result. Uh, some died and they were called martyrs. Uh, so that idea of uh, dying for your faith, uh, becoming a martyr for the sake of Jesus or for the gospel uh, or for God continued in, in the uh, living religions. And then uh, Islam coming on the scene and being closely associated with Judaism and Christianity has a similar idea that you might be persecuted for your faith. And th this is what is shown in the Quran again and again. Um, for example, in Surat al-Buruj, where it says in the Ladina Fatanu al-Mu'minin al-Mu'minat, those who uh, harm and hurt, uh, persecute the believers, men and women, uh, just because the believers are saying that oh, their God is only God. 
um, uh, then uh, those people will have uh, e eventually a penalty in the life hereafter. But this shows the believers suffering martyrdom um, as a result of their faith. Now, some people uh, have exaggerated this uh, idea into thinking that if you go into the battlefield to go and kill somebody, well, then, you know, you, you are dying as a martyr as well when you die in this particular way. Well, And I guess with this example, that's exactly what these blog posts are saying. He linked it to, I don't want to miss an opportunity to submit to God. Yeah, well, well, submitting to God does not mean that, that you go and, and you attack civilians and then get killed as a result, and then you consider yourself a martyr. Uh, in, in the battlefield, uh, the Muslim scholars have discussed whether or not a, a person might become a martyr by, by lunging the enemy. And uh, some said, uh, well, no, he's committing an act of, uh, of, of killing himself, and, and that's not really martyrdom. Uh, because he knows he's going to die in that situation. Some others said, no, no, this is allowable because this is one of the strategies of war. And we know of the kamikaze pilots. Uh, this is outside of the uh, realm of, of Islam where people have the same idea that sometimes a sacrifice is necessary in battle. But that is in, in battle and at attacking uh, uh, soldiers uh, by a, a soldier himself. It's not like a civilian goes and then he joins the battle without any forewarning. Because if civilians do that, as, as this young man is reported to, to have done, if that was his intention, this is entirely wrong because now he, he puts into suspicion every uh, Muslim youth, uh, even though obviously it would be too broad for anyone to reach that conclusion. But people do jump to conclusions like that. If, if this one young Muslim guy uh, did this, maybe there are other Muslim guys out there and, and we don't know which ones are, are who and, and who has what intentions, so we suspect them all. So he, by his foolish action, then brings suspicion on, on the entire Muslim community and questions the, the, the loyalty of, of Muslims uh, to uh, their, their countries, whether it be America or Canada or Australia or Switzerland or any one of these uh, developed nations. And it's these kinds of acts that I think are continuing to foster this perception and uh, you know association of Muslims as terrorists. And we, we're seeing now that one of the motives or one of the areas they're um, exploring this investigation through is an act of domestic terrorism. So what are your uh, thoughts on that? Well, uh, while we condemn every act of terrorism and, and we appeal to the uh, Muslim youth out there to uh, dedicate them themselves to give their lives for God, to be sure, uh, but not by dying, but by living for God. So that uh, you know, this young man in particular was uh, an accomplished uh, student. He, uh, he graduated with an engineering degree, and he was quite young, 24 years old. I imagine if he served uh, the, uh, the the cause of people. Uh, using his uh, skills and knowledge and degree and his name uh, being a Muslim name it gets associated with every good thing that he does for the rest of his life and uh, that would be uh, far more beneficial to Islam than his act of killing some um, U US uh, military personnel uh, and, and dying in, in the same act uh, even if he didn't die this is still uh, something that is detrimental to the cause of Islam uh, in, in the future. So I wouldn't consider him a martyr at all. Uh, whereas on the other hand, uh, wh while we do condemn such acts, so we uh, reel at the uh, suddenness with which, uh, and, and the, 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 the rapidness with which people jump to the conclusion that this must be an act of terrorism. Whereas as uh, Anthea Butler uh, wrote in the Washington Post uh, uh, recently, uh, when Dylan Roof uh, opened fire, uh, he, he was not, his act was not considered to be an act of terrorism. And she complains that uh, if this uh, person, uh, instead of being white uh, as he was, would, uh, had he been a person of color, then uh, the word terrorism would immediately appear I in the discussions. Uh, her article is a very interesting one. It was almost reprinted in the Toronto Star as well. So we should, we should uh, treat every, every situation with the same uh, s uh, simple standard. Uh, if we're going to call things terrorism, let's call them terrorism across the board. Uh, or let, let's look at each situation fairly and see what, uh, what descriptions fit them best. I think you really helped contextualize the conversation. So thank you, Dr. Shapir. You're quite welcome.